It's all good. All right, welcome to the February 2020. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, it's already two months in, barely. Today's only the fourth. However, actually the third, we're still just beginning this new marketplace, which I'm super excited about. Let me just tell you about it first of all, is that if you look at every single graph, if you look at every single metric in the real estate market, there was a peak of inventory between about August 2018 to about July of 2019. And it was not the ideal time to be selling your apartment. You know, 2018 was probably a little bit better. And then 2019, the transaction started slowing down. The pricing started coming down. The inventory was skyrocketing. New homes that were coming on the market were coming on and coming on and coming on. And no one had buyers for them. So we're in this new market. I've been calling it for a while. I said that there's going to reach a point where the amount of inventory that is available kind of like right now, is going to be at an equilibrium of the amount of buyers that are out in the marketplace. Obviously, you have no idea until it's about three months out, okay? So probably about next month or in April, you'll start understanding, okay, how is this affecting pricing? Because right now, all the homes that are being closed were in contract in November or in December or even earlier than that. So the numbers that I'm giving you, again, this is in the past, okay? The best numbers, the best metrics are the ones that are actually established at how many people are coming to open houses? Are they crowded? Are they filled? Are the attendees actually putting in any kind of offers, what are the offers at? And we have a buyer right now, he's looking for a luxury home, one bedroom, right around a million dollars, could go above that, probably about to one one on the west side. Did a search and we're looking at it and we say, there's not a lot, you know what, don't worry about it. Let's see what, come at, let's see what else comes on on the market and then sure enough, we're looking at it and we're saying, there's not a lot, there's not a lot. And this is the reason. And we'll get into the exact numbers so we don't have to say this is all arbitrary, this is all anecdotal. This is actually from looking at what has come on since probably about three weeks into January because things that are already on the marketplace, they're pretty much old and the pricing needs to come down or something needs to happen, some kind of fresh marketing. Then you have homes that came back on, came back on the market. So in other words, they were taken off in November and then you're gonna put them back in January. And then you have fresh new inventory that has not been on the market since the owner has bought it. Those are the ones that I'm most excited about because if there's not a lot that's coming on the market, that means that owners are saying, you know what, I don't know if the market's gonna become coming up to my pricing. When that happens, pricing starts to increase because there's, there's more demand. I'm not saying there's more demand, but we're reaching the point finally where there is an equilibrium between the buyers and the amount of inventory out there. And this is the most special thing, is that all of the homes last year that they needed to sell or they, they were empty, they, it was a Pieter, it was an investment home. Uh, we upgraded, downgraded, it was an estate sale. We had a baby, something happened, and we need to get rid of this home. Those are the people that either took a really big haircut last year or they rented it out. So the ones that rented it out were, were kind of flooding the rental inventory. And ironically enough, when you flood the rental inventory, obviously that's gonna go down. So let's just quickly go into the numbers. Sales pricing is, at th is down 3.7. This is obviously in Manhattan first. Sales pricing down 3.7, not a big deal. That's barely anything if you're looking at a three, uh, say a million dollar place and you're putting in an offer 30K below or 40K below, and then you close you know, 20K above that, that's not a big deal, 3.7. And to be honest, that's kind of bullish for me. The amount of homes that have come on the market is down from last year, 23%. That's a lot. It's down 23% from last year. So that means it was rented out. The owners don't want to sell anymore. They are going to stay in their apartment because they can't get the pricing that they want. Days on the market, this is one area in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens that it actually went up. So days on the market is at 98 days. That's an unhealthy market, not by much, but at least... And by unhealthy, I'm not talking about it's crazy. But when everyone talks about a good market, that's actually usually in favor of the sellers. And everyone says you should buy. It's a great time to buy. No, now is a good time to buy because that means you're going to have less competition. You're not going to get into a bidding war. Yes, there's lower inventory to choose from, but you're going to get better pricing. Trust me, this is exactly like 2010. And then when you actually look at the graph of pricing, it is almost 
percentage-wise equal to 2010. So in other words, in seven years from now, you're going to be looking back at this time and be like, oh my God, whoever bought in 2020, you're doing, it's crazy to even say that date, to be honest, 2020, that's crazy. A new decade. Brooklyn, let's go into Brooklyn. Brooklyn down 2%, nothing. Again, we had a steamroll of pricing going through the roof there in Queens because of all the new development in North Williamsburg, in Williamsburg, even further into Brooklyn because that was where the empty lands were. That's where all these townhouses were getting renovated or demolished and a new development was going in. I personally like renovated townhouses and then you start adding up, in other words, air rights on top of it. New homes, very similar to Manhattan. It is down 21% compared to last year. Days on the market, 86%. I'm sorry, 86 days. Manhattan, it was 98. Uh, Brooklyn is always going to be less, and Queens is always going to be the lowest. And the reason being is because the amount of transactions happening is going from the highest, which is usually in Manhattan, and, and also fluctuating in price because there is such an extreme between the lowest price department and the highest price department. So you have this huge marketplace within Manhattan. You have a $250,000 apartment or you have a $250 million apartment, literally $250 million uh, sold last year. So that's a, and everyone probably heard about it because the brokers that did that made a big deal about it. <laughs> we'll say that. Queens, flat pricing again. That's two months in a row that pricing has flatlined. Personally, I think that's great. And the reason being is that if I talk about it every single month. You go down the Long Island Railroad, you look at all this new inventory. We're talking about brand new amenity-filled rental and sales buildings. You got to fill those. Rental pricing has been going up, and the reason being is because obviously these big, beautiful buildings expect more than a townhouse walk-up in Queens. New homes down 19% compared to last year. Again, inventory levels in Queens has been skyrocketing. Literally last year, there were months where I was saying it's up 43%. Then the next month, it was up 38% year over year. That's a lot. That's a lot of homes that need to be filled, okay? Obviously, we're having a lot of development between Amazon and Facebook. On the west side, you're looking at Hudson Yards. You're also looking at Moynihan Station right around there. You, you have a good amount of Class A, like beautiful class A space that I was worried about commercially because you have World Trade Center, which isn't completely filled out. You have one Vanderbilt, which is going to be taller than the Empire State Building by um, Grand Central Station. And then you have Hudson Yards, which that's a lot of commercial space, let alone the regular already existing commercial space. That's a, that's a lot of jobs that need to be filled. That's a lot of office space that needs to be filled. When that's filled, they need a place to to obviously hang their head, which is at night in an apartment. And that's what we're going to be seeing in Queens. That obviously would have been good if Queens obviously had Amazon move in. Days on the market, 78 days in Queens. I still, I, I look at Queens as a very healthy marketplace. Obviously, there's pockets that there are no, in, no new inventory that would really have someone pull the trigger on because no one's selling. But then you have areas that there are Beautiful brand new buildings. I don't know if the pricing is affordable to a lot of the people that are going to be looking at it, but you're only a couple of stops away from Grand Central Station, Bryant Park, and then Times Square. And then if you take the seven further in, you're going to Hudson Yard. So the train lines are there. Brooklyn is more desirable because you're not having these massive buildings being built like they are in Queens or in Manhattan. Obviously, Brooklyn, you have Carroll Gardens and you have these Brooklyn Heights, these beautiful renovated townhouses, very small new development buildings that are only about five stories, nothing crazy. Obviously, if you go to downtown Brooklyn, then you have some, you know, 30, 40, 50 story buildings. That's really the only place within Brooklyn that you're going to have it because of zoning laws. So personally, if you're a seller, I'm actually bullish at the right price. You're going to be able to find that. This is the first time I'm saying that in months, okay? If you're a buyer, you definitely have to get involved in this marketplace. I know it's scary. I know that everyone's telling you not to buy and that the 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 invent it just every factor that people are, are talking about are trying to subdue a good buy. And the problem is when everyone gets involved is when the old age, you buy when everyone is selling and you sell when everyone is buying. The, the adage is completely true in, in real estate, if not more, if not more, because the market takes so much slower than a stock market. If, if 
earnings come out for Tesla and it and like it has for the last two years have just skyrocketed to a ridiculous valuation, you're thinking, should I buy now? In the real estate market, it takes months or years, okay? So we're at a lull. We have an election this year. By 2021 next year, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna start that, that, that slow growth and then there's gonna be a hockey stick curve probably around 2023, 2024, 2025, and then 2026, it's kind of go, gonna go like that, 2027, that's when you're, you're really gonna hit the pinnacle, 2028, you're gonna wanna sell. Uh, before then, and then it's going to start again every 10 years. What did I say? 2010. This is exactly like 2010. It's 2020 right now. That's 10 years ago. So if you're interested, if you need a valuation on anything, we're tracking all of the, all of the inventory. We know all the homes that are coming off the market. We're talking to all those owners. We know all the owners that are selling on their own. And then obviously we're tracking all of the closings and where pricing is going. So if you want to sign up for the market report, if you want to get a personalized phone call with me and just say, is it a good time? For me, we gain the loyalty because we're saying, you know what, it's not a good time this year to sell. I literally have a pitch on Wednesday. That's exactly what I'm going to tell the owners. I'm going to say, what, 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 what do you want to net on this? They'll tell me the number, and then I, I'll look around in Chelsea and say, in West Chelsea, and say, you know what, at at this time we can't you get can't get you that number. You renovated your home beautifully, but I would wait a year, and we probably can get you that number next year. Okay, that's the loyalty. That's the trust gained by someone that is not gonna just splash your home onto the marketplace and force you to take some, some number that's a lot lower. So if you wanna get involved with BPI, shoot me an email, charles at boatinston.com. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.